trembles at his voice It trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God
lifting Jesus up, we're lifting Jesus up, we're gonna praise Him. You come and fill our hearts with all your power and love. Take us a level up, you're so amazing, you're so amazing. We're lifting Jesus up, we're lifting Jesus up, we're gonna praise Him. You come and fill our hearts with all your power and love. Take us a level up, you're so amazing, you're so amazing. Now I'm on fire, burning for you Cause there's nothing better yeah. More than your presence I wanna stay here all of my days Cause it's so amazing Hearing your freedom So I'm praising, lifting your name Good morning. Greetings and blessings in Jesus' name, brothers and sisters of the BCM family. Today we are going to look at how to live life without compromising my faith. And our reading is taken from Daniel chapter 1 verses 1 to 21. In Daniel chapter 1 verses 1 to 21 it says, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and laid siege to it. The Lord handed Jehoiakim, king of Judah, over to him, along with some of the vessels from the house of God. Nebuchadnezzar carried them to the land of Babylon to the house of his God, and put the vessels in the treasury of his God. The king ordered Ashpenaz, the chief of his court officials, to bring some of the Israelites from the royal family and from the nobility, young men without any physical defect, good-looking, suitable for instructions, in all wisdom, knowledgeable, perceptive and capable of serving the king's palace and to teach them the Chaldean language and literature. 
The king assigned them daily provisions from the royal food and from the wine that he drank. They were to be trained for three years, and at the end of that time they were to serve in the king's court. Among them, from the descendants of Judah, were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them other names. He gave them the name Betelshazzar to Daniel, Shadrach to Hananiah, Meshach to Mishael, and Abednego to Azariah. Faithfulness in Babylon. Verse 8. Daniel determined that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine he drank. So he asked permission from the chief official not to defile himself. God had granted Daniel favor and compassion from the chief official. Yet he said to Daniel, My lord, the king assigned your food and drink. I'm afraid of what would happen if he saw your faces looking thinner than those of the other young men of your age. You would endanger my life with the king. Verse 11. So Daniel said to the guard whom the chief official had assigned to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah. Please test your servants for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then examine our appearance and the appearance of the young men who were eating the king's food and deal with servants based on what you see. He agreed with them about this and tested them for ten days. He agreed with them about this and they all look healthier and better than all the young men who were eating the king's food. So the guard continued to remove their food and the wine they were to drink and give them vegetables. Verse 17. God gave these four young men knowledge and understanding in every kind of literature and wisdom. Daniel also understood visions and dreams of every kind. At the end of time that the king had said to present them, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king interviewed them, and among all of them, no one was found equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they began to serve the king's court in every matter of wisdom and understanding that the king consulted them about. He found them ten times better than all the diviner priests and medium in his entire kingdom. Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. This is the word of the Lord. Glory to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your word. And we saw how your people who walk with you trust and believe you. Father God, as we try to unpack the reading from Daniel today, help us through your Holy Spirit to speak through me so that we get a clear picture and clear understanding. Father God, we give you the honor and glory and we say have your way in our lives as we listen to your word, inwardly digest and help us to walk with them. Brothers and sisters, an interesting reading. We saw Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, how they trusted the Lord and what they said to the chief official whom were given instructions to ensure that they were looked after with food and drinks. But they chose the part of God. Different countries have different cultural norms. And what is appropriate in one culture may be offensive in another culture. For example, you should never touch a person's head in Thailand. The head is considered sacred. In Portugal, you should never write anything in red ink. It is offensive. 
Chewing gum is illegal in Singapore and can result in a large fine. In our message today, Daniel illustrates for us how to live when we leave home or encounter on those graduating from high school. It applies to all of us. Anytime something changes in our lives, a new job, a new house, a new school, a new stage in life, we face challenges to our faith. Today's topic is how should we ensure that we stand by with our faith without any compromisation. Daniel illustrates how to live when we leave what is familiar to us and encounter new situations. Pressures I encounter to compromise my faith. As Christians, we will face pressures to compromise our faith. Even when we are teenagers, this can happen. Daniel was a teenager when he was taken captive to Babylon and served under their government. He faced this compromise early in his life. Pressures are placed on us to change the way we think about the world. And this is clearly illustrated in Daniel chapter 1 verses 3 to 8. When we enter the world, one will be pressurized to conform or to adapt to that way of thinking. Whether it is a company or a school or some other institution, we will be asked to change our thinking. The pressure on us brothers and sisters as Christians to change our thinking today comes from the print, the media, movies and television as well as from teachers. The world will try to conform us into their mould, the world we are in today. In other words, they will try to brainwash us. The Hebrew young teenagers were being brainwashed into Babylonian worldview. There are a different way they try to do this. The same pattern employed by Nebuchadnezzar to draw Daniel and his friends away from the Lord is employed all around us today. I will try and highlight this by looking at four ways the world will try to pressure us to fit into its worldview. First and foremost, isolation. Isolation is the first place. We saw how Daniel, Azariah, Hananiah were isolated. In Babylon, they were separated from the regular public worship of God, from the teaching of the Word of God, from the fellowship and wisdom of the people of God, and from the daily illustration of what is meant to be a citizen. Secondly, indoctrination. They were taught the language and literature of the Chaldeans, which is indicated in Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. That might seem harmless enough. After all, there is surely nothing wrong with God's people studying foreign literature. The aim of the course from the Chaldean language and literature, however, was not merely academic. It was to retrain their mind to think as the Babylonians rather than the Israelites. Third, compromise. The Jewish youngsters enrolled in Nebuchadnezzar's school were given a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank, which was pointed us in Daniel chapter 1 verse 5. When Daniel perceived correctly in this food allotment was an effort to seduce him into the lifestyle of a Babylonian through the enjoyment of pleasures he had never before known. The good life that Daniel was offered was intended by the king to wean him away from the hard 
life to which God had called him. It would encourage him to focus on himself and on a life of enjoyment. Daniel, however, was a true son of God. Like you and me today, we should be true to God's word. It would lead him to drink and to think of himself no longer as a servile Israelite, but as a distinguished courtier to King Nebuchadnezzar. Next point, confusion. The fourth element in the process of weaning these young people from the truth was the changing of their names. What is certain is that anything that reminded them of their origin and destiny was removed with the changes of name given to these four young men. The same em pattern employed by Nebuchadnezzar to draw Daniel away from the Lord is employed all around the world today. And we should be very careful, brothers and sisters. The way we think about the world is also tied to the way we worship. If our spiritual life affects our thinking, in our life with other people, then there will be pressure to change the way we worship. One can see that the pressure to change their worship was enormous. The culture changed their names to honor the culture's worship practices. The fact that we remember Daniel's Hebrew name and not his Babylonian name Belshazzar speaks to the ongoing influence of a name. You will be tested in a similar way in your walk, brothers and sisters, in your Christian life. You will need to know that that pressure is there. The pressure will be there to change about how we think about the world. We will also receive pressure to change the way we live out our faith. We must not make any compromises. Pressure to change the way we live out our faith, as pointed out to us in Daniel's chapter 1, verse 5 and verse 8. The king assigned them daily provisions from the royal food and from the wine he drank. They were to be trained for three years, and at the end of that time they were to serve in the king's court. Daniel determined that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine he drank, so he asked permission from the chief official not to defile himself. Clear how you and me, brothers and sisters, should stand firm in our faith. Eating this kind of meat was against Mosaic law, and it was also food that was sacrificed to idols. Some will say that we don't live by the Mosaic law and we don't sacrifice meat to idols. We may not be sacrificing meat to idols, but we are sacrificing our time. We don't worship on Saturday. Instead, we worship on Sunday, which the New Testament calls the Lord Day, because Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday. The way we think about the world is also tied to the way we worship. If our spiritual life affects our thinking in our life with other people, then there will be pressure to change the way we worship. One can see that the pressure to changing their worship was enormous. Instead of changing the names, our culture is redefining words that matter to our faith and trying to change how we spend our time. Even today, we see that the conviction of worshipping on Sunday is being threatened by outside compromise. Here in the Philippines, you see all the shops open on a Saturday, Christmas Day. Interesting. The world is trying to squeeze time from, away from the opportunity to worship at church. It's not just at the workplace. We are being encouraged to engage in sports activities that conflict with times of worship. In England, football is played on a, Saturday, on a Sunday. 
Some would say that the church needs to adapt its practices to change to culture. There is some logic to that. But when we look at the Bible, there is a serious consequence to ignoring the rule of the Sabbath. The Sabbath or time of worship to God was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The New Testament encourages us to spend time together in worship as a group of Christians. And if we do this, we will not compromise our faith. However, ignoring a time to worship God by engaging in other activities is exactly what caused the Israelites to be taken to Babylon for 70 years in the first place. Second Chronicles chapter 36 verse 21 tells us, This fulfilled the word of the Lord through Jeremiah, and the land enjoyed its Sabbath rest all the days of desolation until 70 years were fulfilled. The reason that Daniel was in captivity was because God's people had ignored God's instruction about worship. There is serious pressure in our culture today to replace the worship of God with the worship of cultural activities. It's okay to engage in those activities, but it is not okay to replace our worship to God by the engagement of culture idols. Today, the idols of our culture comes from America and the way the Americans behave. Yeah, we need to differentiate our beliefs. I hear people say, let your kids play sports. And they do, but I am not going to have my kids spend almost every waking evening engaged in cultural activity at the expense of taking them away from the influence of God's word. Sometimes God takes us out of our comfort zone, mainly because of our own doing, where we learn to trust in him alone. Sending God's people to Babylon was an act of judgment. They had been abused and they have abused the Sabbath. At the same time, it was an act of mercy. God was going to teach them what is meant to sing praises to God in a foreign land. This leads me to the ways in which we can prepare to pursue God's holiness out in the world. How do we live our faith? In the world. God gave us three communities to help us to ensure we make no compromise with our faith. He also gives us the same three communities to help us to live out our faith in the world. The three communities God gave us. First and foremost, as pointed out in John Neil chapter 1 verses 9 to 10, God, God himself. Being a Christian ministry has an influence <clears throat> on us to prepare us. Our parents have an influence on us to prepare us. But ultimately, God has the influence on our life. God works on our heart. God leads us. Apart from God's work in our heart, we cannot walk in holiness. Out of these three communities, our church, our family, and our personal relationship with God will affect other people. <clears throat> our church. There were many groups of people coming together to worship in Babylon. Daniel may have been isolated, but he had the hope of a community coming together. Today we worship together here at the Bigger Christian Ministry. There are all kinds of Christian communities. <clears throat> Those communities will adapt based on the changes in the world. The fact that some are watching this sermon today online tells us how our community has changed in this pandemic times. Our parents. Daniel's name speaks to the value of his parents placed on God. They named their son God is judged. That's the meaning of Daniel. It was as if Daniel's spirit knew how important it was to follow God. 
younger brothers and sisters today in the community in our congregation your parents have an influence on your faith and your future <clears throat> parents have a number of years 18 to 20 years to make influence on their children as they're growing up our personal faith our personal faith and how can we influence our friends Daniel's courage inspired the other three friends. Daniel would not eat the meat sacrificed to idols. These three friends would later not compromise as well. All four young men were given new names, but it was Daniel who first resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And Daniel's three friends followed his lead. So brothers and sisters, walk the walk not talk the talk. Not only that, but two chapters later in the book of Daniel, we see these three young men standing all by themselves in front of a fiery furnace, facing death. Daniel is nowhere to be seen. Remembering to the, the resolve that Daniel had alone and how he brought them to the test. They then stood firm without compromise before a powerful king in a test bigger than the first. This is clearly illustrated to us in Daniel chapter 3 verses 16 to 18. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego replied to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to give you an answer to this question. If the God who serve exists, then he can rescue us from the furnace of the blazing fire. He can rescue us from the furnace of this blazing fire and he can rescue us from the power of you, the king. But even if we do not, if he does not rescue us, we want you as king to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the gold statue you set up. Brothers and sisters, Christianity is a faith, but it's also a way of life. It will conflict with the business world. We must learn that if one is to follow Jesus, there will be costs. We can't always take the easy way out. Our personal faith will affect us and how we be behave. Clearly illustrated in Daniel chapter 1 verses 15 to 17. Shadrach Meshach and Abednego replied to the king Nebuchadnezzar, We don't need to give you an answer to the question. That's what I said. Our body, at the end of ten days, they look better and healthier than all the young men who were eating the king's food. That was pointed out to us in First Daniel chapter, verse 15. By making the choice to follow God, in Daniel's case, it was a healthier choice. He was not eating all of the rich meat that could affect his body negatively. He was healthier. Our spirit, important. Daniel chapter 1 verse 17 tells us, God gave these four young men knowledge and understanding in every kind of literature and wisdom. Daniel also understood visions and dreams of every kind. Daniel was in tune with God and Daniel was able to hear from God. He was more spiritually in tune and was able to listen to God. So I urge you, concentrate, listen to God's word. He will help us and our faith will not be compromised. Our mind. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 20 it says, In every matter of wisdom and understanding that the king consulted them about, he found them ten times better than the diviner priests and the medium in his entire kingdom. Daniel's mind was clear and sharp. His mind worked better than the people around him. Our personal holiness affects us. The way we grow in our faith can actually help our mind, our spirit, our body. But it is more than that. Daniel influenced King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nabu, and King Belhashar until the reign of King Cyrus, the Persian king, 
who overthrew the Babylonian Empire. Daniel chapter 1 verse 21 tells us, Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. So he remained in Babylon. So your faith cannot waver, provided you trust in the Lord at all times. The government leaders were the ministry that God gave to Daniel to influence. Daniel was able to influence these kings and have an impact because of his devotion to God. At its height, in the beginning of the 19th century, the British Empire was the largest world power in history. By 1922, it governed over 450 million people, one-fifth of the Earth's population at that time, and covered more than 13, 13 million square miles. It was known as the empire on which the sun never sets. It was known as the empire by that name. Viewed against the larger backdrop of human experience, however, its greatness was relatively short-lived. By July 2013, it had been reduced to only one out of 28 countries that constitute the much smaller and less powerful European Union. We are now out of the European Union. So you can see, if you don't trust in God, how things can ultimately disintegrate. As of 2017, the British Empire is now in the process of being in control of only one country, the United Kingdom only. Other powerful countries of the world today can learn from this example. The ultimate kingdom of the sovereign God, in which we are privileged to play a small part, is the only one that endures forever. Remember, it's only one that endures forever. When we influence others, it becomes essentially our ministry when we live our life as a christian we have an influence on others what kind of christian life are you going to be to live in daniel's case he put in a position to influence three successive secular kings what is it going to be in your case brothers and sisters how are you going to believe and behave and walk in your Christian life to ensure that you do not deviate from what the Lord is telling us to do. How not to compromise our life without compromising our faith. Our personal faith is extremely important. God's answer, God gives us the answer at all times. God blessed Daniel because Daniel believed in him. And it's important that we do the same. So our life should be like that. So our conclusion, how to live this life without compromising our faith. As pointed out, let's follow Daniel's example. God blessed Daniels and his friend. They were healthier than the others because they chose not to follow King Nebuchadnezzar. Brothers and sisters, we should not follow the world, but follow God's word. All God's word is given to us. It's God's breed. It's for teaching us, correcting us, and rebuking us in righteousness. Daniel and his friends were young, but they were already possessed key characteristics. Our brothers and sisters here, in the bigger Christian ministry, we've been following God's word. I urge you to continue listening, following the teachings of bigger Christian ministry. It's a Bible-believing church. In this way, we will not compromise our faith. Follow the teaching and listen to God's word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness, Lord Jesus. Help us to ensure that we live a life without compromising and to ensure that our faith is always in tune with your words, Lord Jesus. And Father, as we go our separate ways today, we said, have your way in our life. 
help us to remember what we've heard today and how Daniel survived and how he did not compromise his faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen.